Hello and welcome to the third installment of Medieval Survival Guide. Today you will learn the most essential skill you need in order to survive in Central Bohemia – fighting. The game's been out for a while now and many of you might have already mastered the art of war. If this is the case, you will more than likely not learn anything new today, but feel free to keep watching and let me know whether I've overlooked some important aspect. Before we get into the subject of today, it's necessary to point out that the unique combat system of this game is mostly optimized for duels and it can get very frustrating against multiple opponents. Another annoying aspect of combat is that, unlike the techniques I've taught in previous tutorials, the ones I'll share today cannot be reliably performed 100% of the time. Also, I initially prepped this tutorial before a survival difficulty was even announced, so it will be easier for me to explain everything as if we're playing on the default difficulty, you know, the one where you have an interface that aids you. The interface makes it easier for me to illustrate my points. Without an interface to help, you'll just have to read your opponent's moves and react to them accordingly. Don't worry about it, it's not that hard. And if you're faced with a group of hostiles, it's best to make use of the stealth mechanics I taught you in the previous video. Your other two options would be to either run away or to use the full extent of the knowledge I'll share today. For the sake of simplicity, this tutorial is going to be split into three main parts, each corresponding to the three levels of combat mastery you can achieve throughout the game. That was a very lengthy introduction, so without delaying any further, let us finally begin. It has already been established that Henry is pretty useless at everything, especially fighting, at least early on when he's still a sickly peasant boy. One of the first steps out of uselessness is talking to Combat Master Vaniek during the prologue. In doing so, he will teach you the basics, how to slash, stab and chain your strikes and he will also advise you to keep moving. Doing so is especially important if you fight multiple hostiles at once. Always keep them in front of you and avoid getting surrounded. But the master doesn't make an effort to teach you any defensive techniques, so this responsibility falls to me. Early on, when you're still a beginner, all you can do is hold your shield high and hope for the best. You do have a shield, don't you? Doesn't matter, you can perform this rudimentary block with just a weapon, but if the weapon's defense stat is low, it will quickly get damaged, losing its edge and its damage output. You can perform the simple block by either matching your guard with your enemy's attack direction or holding down the block button. It's best to get into the habit of doing both at the same time to ensure maximum survivability. If you like shields, you'll find the Stronghold perk to be very helpful, especially at this first level. Blocking attacks like this depletes your stamina, but it prevents you from taking damage. When you're exhausted, however, you'll only be blocking attacks with your face, because stamina is your first line of defense. Allow me to clarify this point. When you're hit, you take a little bit of health damage, but most of the damage is dealt to your stamina. When stamina is gone, however, your health will take the full damage of the strike. And unlike health, which needs to be healed with sleep or potions outside of combat, stamina can regenerate in a battle if you back away and regain your strength. It is also important to note that your stamina is directly correlated to your max health, so the more injured you are, the less energy you will have for fighting or running, and this also applies to enemies, so if you heavily injure a bandit and he starts running away, Know that you can catch up to him and tackle him until he drops. When you receive soldier training, you'll have a lot more offensive options, but at the peasant level, the best you can do in terms of offense is chaining your strikes. Attack, and as soon as your first strike hits your target, launch another strike, and then another, and then another. Don't spam the attack button. Get into the rhythm and keep practicing that, because it is your baseline. Any unskilled enemies you encounter will quickly get overwhelmed by an attack chain because they can't keep up with all the hits they're taking. But some of these enemies will be aggressive and they can hit you before you hit them. If this is the case, block their attacks and when they get tired, start attacking. But once you face combatants with more training, they will be on the defensive and they can parry your strikes and then they will repost. In order to have a chance against a more experienced enemy, you'll have to forcefully create an opening in his defenses. The clinch master perk will help here because the best way to open an enemy is to close the distance between the two of you and get in his face. When you do this, your weapons lock for about one second. What you want to do at this point is spam the attack button and when you win the clinch, your opponent will be staggered, allowing you to safely land a strike, if you don't push him too far away. It's best if your enemy is pushed into a wall or a tree so he doesn't get thrown out of range. Word of warning. Avoid triggering a clinch with an enemy if you're outnumbered. 
If you engage in a clinch with an enemy and another one starts attacking you from behind, you will be locked into this move until your backstabber finishes his combo. And this can cost you your life. The clinch mechanic also applies to unarmed combat, but since fists are made of flesh and bone, they don't really clinch. For unarmed, we'll call this mechanic the struggle. See these moves being performed on me? That's an opponent winning a struggle against me because I either don't fight back or I don't have the perk. When I do, you can see him getting pushed and then beaten. You can easily win fistfights by rushing your opponent and pummeling him continuously, but be careful if you run out of stamina, especially if you're affected by the consumption debuff. Once you get tired, he can very well beat you if you get careless. Oh, and until you unlock the clinch master perk, most enemies will win the struggle automatically. Luckily for you, they don't follow up with attacks. We're pretty much done talking about beginner tactics. They may not sound like much, but these techniques form the very foundation of combat, and without them, any advanced knowledge you may learn will be useless. Now that you know how to be effective even as a beginner, you can choose to do whatever. You can follow the roadmap I've shared in the first episode, you can go thieving like I taught you in the second episode, or you can just roam around the map helping the inhabitants of Bohemia with favors. But if you want to get better at fighting, you have to follow the main quest and visit Sir Radzig in the city of Rate. He will ask the captain of the guard to instruct you how to fight like a soldier, so you will have to go with him to the training fields on the outskirts of town. There, the captain will teach you two essential defensive moves, parrying and dodging. So let's explain these. Now, when an enemy begins an attack, you will have to quickly tap the block button during that short window before his attack lands on you. On an interface, this is illustrated by a green shield indicator in the center of the five-pointed star which represents your guard. If your timing is good, time will briefly slow down to let you know that you have performed a perfect block which may open up your opponent for a quick repost. And unlike the simple block, the parry will not use any of your stamina and it will also interrupt an opponent's combo on you. Sometimes, if your timing ain't perfect, you will have performed a simple block instead, which still protects you from damage, but isn't as effective. Basically, if time slows down, you parry, but if it's just sparks, that's just a block, so don't get them confused. Also, while I was researching the game mechanics for this tutorial, I realized something that was in front of me all the time. So you can launch a counterattack as soon as you perform the perfect block, that I have already said, and I also mentioned that your repost can be parried and then your opponent can repost back. So you and your opponent can be locked into a dance of death, parrying and reposting and parrying each other's counterattacks, but if you keep at it long enough, your opponent may lose his footing, allowing your repost to finally strike him. And that repost can evolve into a combo, a mechanic I'll discuss very soon. But parrying can damage your weapon and if you don't want that, you can avoid hits by dodging. When your opponent launches his attack, tap a movement key to the side or to the back and you will have avoided a strike. If you're playing as a sneaky sneak, dodging will be your primary form of defense and you can obtain perks that make it even more effective. These perks are light armor, which makes dodging easier if you wear light armor. And there's also the Jester perk that makes your enemies lose their morale if you dodge too often. I believe you can launch a counterattack even after a dodge, but I haven't tested this mechanic long enough to see if it's true. From my observations, I would say it is. By the time you reach the soldier level, your skill with weapons should have increased enough to allow you to unlock a combo, so let us discuss this new offensive mechanic. First of all, what are combos? Well, they're just like the previously discussed attack chains, except they follow specific attack directions. For example, Durchlaufen starts off with a stab, then it is followed by a slash from the left, and another slash from the lower right. Let's see it in action. As you can see, the last attack is a special move which always hits, but if your opponent manages to parry the first or the second attack, you won't perform the combo. So let's talk about how you can perform this offensive move. We'll first take a clip with a combat interface to illustrate my point. If we slow down the clip, you can notice that when I start with a stab, the next attack direction in the combo is briefly highlighted on the interface. And if you don't move your guard and just keep on chaining attacks, you will sometimes perform the move automatically. In order to perform the combo from before, you keep your mouse still and chain, stab, slash, slash. 
Other times, however, the hold still method doesn't work and you have to position the next strike yourself in between attacks to ensure you follow the exact steps to perform the combo. If you try performing the false edge combo, you start with the top attack. If you hold still and the next two attacks in the chain are right slash and lower left slash, that's good. But if your second attacks come from any other direction, then the combo will fail and next time you try this combo, you should move your next attack to the right. Just as you launch the first overhead strike, move your guard to the right and after you launch the second slash, move your mouse to the lower left to complete the combo. Personally, I can probably execute 3 or 4 combos out of every 10 attempts because more often than not my opponent parries my attack or dodges out of the way or his ally attacks me from behind and interrupts my combo. But if an enemy is only capable of defending himself using the simple block, your combo succeeds so it's best to attempt these after you parry or dodge or win in a clinch. Once you receive soldier training you'll be able to defeat almost anyone in a duel so you can feel free to roam through the world and do your own thing. But once you are ready for the third level of combat mastery, you'd best follow the main quest until after the Neuhof incident. When the incident starts, you will arrive there with Captain Bernard and his retinue, but after the investigation is over, the captain will return back to Rate. Once that happens, go to him and ask him to teach you how to perform the master stroke. This powerful defensive move basically incorporates an instant repost into a parry and as long as you know how to parry and block, this move will be easy to perform. In order to pull this off, watch your enemy and match your guard with his attack. If his stance points at an overhead attack, keep your guard up and if he attacks from his right, protect your left. Then, as he launches the attack, you just perform a parry and you'll see an animation like this happen, letting you know that you just performed a master stroke. This move can pull enemies from their group or push them away and even deal heavy damage. Not only that, but look at it. It's beautiful. And, to top it all, you're guaranteed to land a counterattack after you successfully execute this move. Well, as long as your opponent doesn't have any friends to interrupt you. If you're lucky, you may even turn the counter-attack into a full-blown combo to overwhelm your enemy. And speaking of combos, you will notice that the sword has more chain attacks than the axe and the mace combined, and you also need a lower level in sword to unlock your first combo, unlike the other two weapons. But with that said, there is a trade-off. The axe and hammer are more effective than swords against armored targets, so if you can, you should train one of them as well. You can't call yourself a master combatant until you learn how to use multiple weapons. To that end, you can visit various combat masters throughout the world and take lessons from them. For example, Captain Robard of Talmberg can teach you how to better wield blunt instruments of justice. Apparently you can also use pole arms, which deal a lot of damage, but they can't be carried in your inventory and you'll have to hold them in your hand. So I'm not gonna bother talking about them more than that. The last advanced technique you will learn is the feint, which you actually learn when you first receive soldier training. So let's discuss this for a while. Now, if you choose an attack direction and then you click, you will attack from that direction. But if you hold down the mouse button, you'll see that you're winding up an attack from that direction. The feint is nothing more than changing the direction of the attack just before you launch it, and it is done to confuse your enemy. Say you're preparing an attack from the left. What you do is change to top and release the attack button, successfully bashing your opponent's noggin. After this you can continue with a false edge combo and finish him off. You can change your attack direction as many times as you like while you're winding up an attack, but you're defenseless as you perform this, so try to avoid using it when faced with a group. And if you do, do it quickly. Well, we're pretty much done with all the combat techniques. What you need to do now that you have all this knowledge is put it into practice. Practice and train up your skills so you can unlock perks that make you even more effective in combat. Now I'm going to make a short list of all my favorite perks. There's Bloodletter and Serrated Edge which can be taken early and they help you to draw your opponent's blood sooner, limiting his lifespan. Stronghold and Clinch Master have already been mentioned because they're important to unlock at lower levels. But my favorite perk is Headcracker which can temporarily lower the amount of enemies you fight or bring a duel to a quick and final conclusion. Other perks I take but aren't as important are Weapon Cruncher and Tin Opener, which both help damage an opponent's gear if he draws out the fight. Speaking of gear, you will need to maintain it regularly. 
because battered armor will burden you without providing any protection, and a dull blade will tickle your enemies, making it more likely for them to die of laughter than the wounds it inflicts. You can pay an artisan to repair your equipment, or you can fix it yourself with repair kits. And you can increase your maintenance skill by sharpening every single edged weapon you find in the world. Doing so will also increase that weapon's price if you plan on selling it. And if you choose to roleplay as an honorable knight who respects his fellow citizens and does not wish to steal from them, combat will be your biggest source of income. And as such, you need the gear worn by your enemies. So if a bandit surrenders and you want his stuff, perhaps you can choke him out. But it's best to kill him. He chose a life of crime, he chose to rob and murder, and he knew the risks involved in his job. You're just an instrument of divine justice and you will use the bandit's gear to finance your righteous crusade through the lands of Bohemia. Before you pick a fight, it helps if you prepare beforehand. If you've practiced archery, you can thin the herd of enemies from afar, and if you learn to read, you can brew your own potions which can either fortify and heal you, or poison your enemies. It's a good idea to also invest into a horse as soon as you can and have an escape plan prepared. If things go bad, you can run to your horse and as you mount up, you can start galloping away. Don't need to wait for the mounting animation to finish, just bolt or you'll get unhorsed. If you get injured, run away, patch your bleeding wounds, drink up a healing potion and then you can return to the fight. Or if you're courageous, try to defeat your enemies before you bleed out. That's also an option, but not a very smart one. As I've already said, if you're injured, you cannot heal yourself during combat, so if you see this icon, run away until it changes into this, and then you can bandage yourself and drink a healing potion. Anyway, remember that famous line, my kingdom for a horse? Earlier on I said that if a fight is too hard, you can use a horse to run away, but you can also fight by applying mountain blade tactics against strong enemies. You can simply gallop towards an enemy to build up momentum and then perform a well-timed stab on your target. I sometimes use this to deadly effect, but it feels like a cheap tactic. And at high levels of combat mastery, fighting looks really beautiful and you shouldn't cut it short because you want to kill your enemies in one minute instead of five. Still, in order to pull this off, you will need a courageous horse and these perks. Preferably combine them. But before I bring this video to a final conclusion, I still have some tips and tricks to share with you. Number 1. After you execute certain combos, such as the blunt strike, your opponent is staggered and you're able to land a free strike on him. Number 2. You can dodge to reposition yourself against flanking enemies. This is best illustrated by an example. Say you're fighting two enemies. Your primary target is already in front of you and his ally tries to flank your right. As your primary enemy attacks, you dodge left to reposition yourself to face both enemies. Number 3. You can defeat entire groups of foes by just defending yourself if you masterfully use the Master Strike technique. Number 4. If you push an enemy too far away with a clinch or a Master Strike, he is staggered long enough for you to take a few steps and close the distance in order to land your counterattack. Number 5. You are able to disengage from combat at any time by sprinting and looking away. You can use this to either escape enemies or reposition the fight to a more favorable position. Be careful with this, however, because number 6, if your back is turned towards an enemy and he catches up to you, he's able to tackle and that leaves you vulnerable. When you feel an enemy is close, always face him and enter your guard stance to prevent severe back pain. Number 7, if an enemy whose gear you want surrenders while you're surrounded, you can lead the fight away from the surrendered enemy and then disengage, sprint towards him and stab him a couple of times to ensure his gear stays right where it is. Number 8. You should position attack zones to hit an enemy's unarmored body parts. If his leg armor is weak, go for uppercut slashes, and if he wears no helmet, hit him with overhead strikes. Number 9. I keep saying you need to practice. Captain Bernard is almost always available for sparring practice, and if he isn't there, you can have some fights with the retype rollers in order to increase your strength, defense, and warfare skills. And finally at number 10, because we need a nice round number, if you cannot afford to purchase a horse, you will get one for free if you just follow the main quest. But this was pretty much all I could teach you about combat. You can use all the advice I've shared today and you'll have a much easier time defeating your enemies. Still, this tutorial is just a guideline. Everything I told you here is just knowledge and that means nothing unless you put it into action. If you truly want to get better at fighting, keep practicing all the elements we've discussed today. 
parries, dodges, combos. Experiment with everything and maybe you'll find some tactics that I didn't even think of. Anyway, I hope this was helpful, but now it's time for us to part ways. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time. Till then, goodbye.